that film make now? Good for you, man. You guys are on it. If you haven't gotten married or if you did get married and you got divorced, you're on it. You fucking know the game. Count yourself a winner. But don't be an arrogant fuck and believe that you can tell everyone else that they're fucking idiots and you're this arrogant, erudite, fucking smart guy. No. Go out and help other men for fucking Christ's sake. Well, let me stop you there. That's complete bullshit. Because I've, I've been a single man all my life. I've never got married, right? And I never will. Because there's no incentive, certainly not at 41 years old. But let me, let me put it this way. You put 1.5 million into, into your house. So, so you can give your ex-wife about 1.5 million. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how to live or what to earn. But 1.5 million, you compare that with, say, let's say you've spent $100 on a whore or $200 or pounds. Now, I don't care what your nationality or what part of the world you live in. There's a huge difference between the two. Now, being MGTOW works. Now, everything about MRAs and what you're doing is basically just going to fail and achieve nothing. I'm not going to tell you straight up why. Now I'm going to show you. So this is Dean Ismay. Look at the body language with the way he speaks to this woman. How does feminism hurt men or make uh, take away rights for them? Of course, I don't know what what's been said in your other interviews. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make the case. I get a little grief for this in some men's rights circles. Um, um, but although I know others and a voice for men are on tune with me in this, I'm going to say this right out for any feminists who are listening. Feminists aren't the only problem. They didn't. The problems didn't start with feminism. So when I start criticizing feminism, I want you to know you're just part of the problem. They're just part of the problem. The problems run deeper and go back a lot longer than that. But how does feminism hurt women, men too? The way, main way it does is by teaching that men oppress women. That is the way. Is the um, you calling men oppressors and women oppressed um, demonizes men and I believe diminishes women at the same time. It's a way of telling men to shut up. It's a way of telling men that their experiences don't matter. You tell a man he's privileged Therefore, anything he's gone through or anything he has to say doesn't matter. Now, let's look at the body language of Nigel Farage talking in the European Parliament. Now, this is a man who has single-handedly built the UK Independence Party and successfully got a referendum result for the referendum on Brexit. Let's watch the following video and see how he behaves and speaks to people. We were told that when we had a president, we'd see a giant global political figure. The man that would be the political leader for 500 million people. The man that would represent all of us on the world stage. The man whose job was so important that, of course, you're paid more than President Obama. Well, I'm afraid what we got was you. And I'm sorry, but after that performance earlier that you gave, and I don't want to be rude, but... But, you know, really, you have the charisma of a damp rag and the appearance of a low-grade bank clerk. And the question that I want to ask, the question that I want to ask, that we're all going to ask, is who are you? I'd never heard of you. Nobody in Europe had ever heard of you. I would like to ask you, President, who voted for you? And what mechanism? Oh, I know democracy is not popular with you lot. And uh, what mechanism do the peoples of Europe have Mr. to remove President. you? Is this European democracy? Well, I, I sense, uh, I sense well, though, that you're competent and capable and dangerous. And I have no doubt that it's your intention to be the quiet assassin of European democracy and of the European nation states. You appear to have a loathing for the very concept of the existence of nation states. Perhaps that's because you come from Belgium, which of course is pretty much a non-country. But since you took over, we've seen Greece reduced to nothing more than a protectorate. 
Sir, you have no legitimacy in this job at all, and I can say with confidence that I can speak on behalf of the majority of the British people in saying we don't know you, we don't want you, and the sooner you're put out to grass, the better. The floor is yours. <laughs> you may not like what I say, but just consider your behaviour. You, after the Irish people in a referendum voted no, said that our group had opened by supporting the no vote, that we'd opened the door to fascism. You said that we had behaved as a group in the Parliament like Hitler and the Nazis in the Reichstag. We've been called by Danny Cohn Bendit mentally weak. You know, you know, it has to be, it can't be it one way. It is not personal statement. Mr. Mr. President Farage, now, imagine it is that not... previous video that Nigel Farage was talking to a stupid feminist like this woman, or an Sarkeesian, or Jim and Greer, and the millions of other stupid parasites that keep belly aching about men and screaming their heads off all the time and bringing nothing to society and bringing nothing to the economy and not even getting a job. You name it. Just, just imagine that. How successful would MRAs be if they actually basically you know, spoke in public and had actual public forum and had, had somebody who's a speaker like Nigel Far Farage? Political correctness will not get you anywhere. This. Stupid idea of chivalry. It's literally throw men under a bus, we don't care.